Arianya here again. Um, I came across this story um, to this evening uh, concerning a young student in, one, uh, in an academy in uh, the state of Florida. And you know, I just started this new series. It's called What's Happening. And um, the first one was concerning, the first story I did was Kendra Shanice Reed. But this one is going to be specifically about Montverde Academy and a student there named Nicole Orr. Um, she's a student there, she's 16 years old, and she was asked to change her hair, where she's wearing her hair natural, which means she's not, you know, uh, relaxing it or putting a jerry curl in it. She's just letting it, just how it grows out of her head, that's how she's wearing it, and she had it, you know, big and beautiful and it's curly. And, um, so apparently this straight A student was asked to change her hair to meet the school standard of neatness. Um, and the language used in the policy of the uh, dress code policy basically is a discriminate uses discriminatory language because it actually referred to and can be used to single out as a, a, a person or a group, a specific group of people, a race of people, based on um, the word locks or dreads. And because we all know that um, locking or dreadlocks can uh, actually or actually is a process by which African hair or hair like mine can uh, go uh, can be a process used to um, to twist it or however you want to call it lock it so that it um, produces dreadlocks or locks so um, and other people have been able to successfully other Caucasian people have been successfully able to lock their hair as well but this is a natural occurrence with our hair um, if we um, uh, so desire to wear it this way but um uh, and her family, her, her parents, her mother and her father, um, came and spoke with the school administrator or the headmaster at this academy. It's a, a very exclusive academy where it's tuition based. Um, and spoke with the headmaster and um, then the, the local news station in Orlando, Florida, got involved and came and interviewed the headmaster too. And he agreed that the use of that specific language, dreadlocks or locks, uh, allowed them the flexibility to, you know, actually um, single out a, a specific person or group of people, which really is it's discriminatory. So um, they're supposed to be removing that language out of, from the policy. Um, however, I think the bigger pick, the bigger um, issue here is that um, African Americans and <clears throat> people of African descent all over the, the globe, um, we even had occurrences of it in uh, on the continent of Africa several months ago, uh, where a similar situation arose. And um, people in charge or administrators that are not of African uh, descent, not being born in Africa or, you know, as a nationality, but actually being of the African race, a descendant of an African uh, uh, parents, right? Um, children are being discriminated against and it's, it's, it's um, actually attacking their self-esteem. It's actually, uh, they're actually being singled out as, um, as, it, as it being unnatural. It's unnatural to have curly, kinky hair. It's unnatural to have hair that grows out of your head that is of our texture, um, that's of our color. You know, they're, they're basically saying this greater society is basically saying that little black girls and and in, and in some cases little black boys or uh, black people um their natural appearance their god given how they were born is not acceptable you know this so called um western um value system this western standard of beauty is anything but um but natural to a person like myself um, even within their own community, there is a very low percentage of women that are naturally or men that are naturally born blonde, but yet you see them cut, change their hair colors all the time. They go from red to blonde to brown to whatever color they choose. They highlight, they do all these unnatural things to their hair, to their natural hair, and that's acceptable. You can imagine how many young girls that are at that school that have color and highlights that's going through their hair because this is just something that women naturally do. It doesn't matter which race you're of. You're going to naturally experiment with your hair. You're going to dye it purple and blue, and you're going to you're going to shave it. And you're going to put it in a mohawk, and 
you know, all these type of things that kids do with their hair in a time when they're 16 and they're 13 and they're 10 and they're trying to, you know, figure out their identity. They're trying to build up their self-esteem. They're trying to be individuals. And this is a really, really, um, which I think is a monstrous approach to people that are, um, that are different from yourself. For you to try to implement policy and guidelines that prevents a person from naturally being who they are. This is so evil and this is like an attack on the very basic foundation of, 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 of human beings. We are human beings, and as such, we have a right to exist on this planet, within any society, on any continent, within any country, within any state, county, city, province, town, village, to exist as we were born. You know, whether we decide to color our hair, to cut our hair, to lock it up, to, you know, let it just, you know, uh, you know, put a rubber band on it. However we decide to wear our hair um, is fine. As long as we clean our hair, you know, we just, you know, hygiene is important if you're going to, you know, if you're going to um, um, go throughout society, you're going to navigate yourself in the world. You want to be presentable. But who is to say what's presentable when they're talking about the very way your hair grows out of your head, which is not in line with their policy, which is so discriminatory. Um, you know, in Louisiana, let me see if I can find the, um, the actual article. I read it probably about six months ago when I was doing some research and it actually talked about, um, a law that, um, slave women were subjected to, um, during the, 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 um, transit, uh, during uh, chattel slavery here in the United States. I'm trying to get this page to come up so I can, um, the system is so slow. I want to get the name of it right and the period upon, a period in which it was implemented into Louisiana, um, it was implemented into law. But anyway, I'm going to see if I can just remember it off the top of my head and I'll see if my system's going to get a little, I, I believe it was called Tignon or Tigon law, which required, um, African women, slaves to cover their hair. And I read a couple articles on it months ago and it really was based on white women in Louisiana society were very jealous of how diverse and beautiful black women were able to uh, adorn their hair, wear their hair, their natural hair. So they had to put on uh, scarves and this was actual law. Um, I believe it's called Tignon Law, and it was probably in the 1700s, I believe it was, that this law was implemented in the state of Louisiana. My system is really slow, so I can't really get to it now, but I'll, I'll leave the link in, in the description box so you can read about it, the history of it. So the natural beauty, and, and this law uh, forbade um, African women slaves that had hair like mine, or would um, probably have dreads or um, have you know, they had to cover their hair. But that didn't stop black women or African women um, from uh, adorning their hair with colorful scarves and wrapping it and, uh, you know, uh, learning how to bind their hair up with a scarf in different fashions. And um, and that's just something we do right now. We'll, we'll wrap our hair in scarves or whatever. And there's different ways we can tie our hair with scarves. And it's just really beautiful. So even though um, the slave, African slave women um, doing uh, chattel slavery here in the United States, in particular um, Louisiana, were subjected to um, these uh, laws uh, that had a foundation in hatred and evilness and jealousy towards the black woman. Uh, we still see that attack of the black woman today in general society throughout the world. And it may not be in your neck of the woods, but it's surely in my neck of the woods and it's surely in the, on the continent of Africa where the majority of people look like myself. Okay. Um, so this sort of uh, sort of societal discrimination fuels low self-esteem, specifically aimed at forcing the assimilation of a specific group to adhere to what is viewed as worldwide standard of beauty, beauty that surely negates the very real and diverse population of the planet we live on. Diversity is as natural and as 
as the number of different plant species you have in the ocean ocean and with the mindset of this white supremacist world we live in they will certainly try to change every seed plant the basic core of its existence to be melanin free and they will also try to extract the very melanin um, from within the soil um, from from a piece of uh, vegetable like a zucchini, a leaf of spinach, a leaf of kale, and they require they're trying to require people with naturally black hair, um, naturally curly hair, to change the appearance to fit some mold that some artificial mold, some artificial standard of what is beauty. Beauty is so diverse. This planet is so diverse that we actually can see beauty in every type of people. You know, so for anyone to try to, um, through media propaganda, through commercialism, um, try to push um, some false narrative, or some false standard of, of beauty, is something that we have to resist. We have to resist this. I don't care who you are, whether you're uh, of the group that's trying to oppress uh, the diversity of other human beings or not. You should be pushing against such policies, such school policies, such university policies, such uh, workplace policies where they attempt to um, require a specific group of people based on their race, how they should look how they should wear their hair. I understand neatness, a policy on neatness, but neatness should not require you to uh, cover your hair, bind your hair, or change the natural appearance of your hair. Um, so this, this leads me to what I believe is a gentle prodding in some circumstances, a poking of the bear in other circumstances um, upon which the, this is what's happening in our community and people aren't very aware of why and I have a personal belief and I believe it's a spiritual um, it's like a spiritual prodding of our nation of our people to separate ourselves from this greater society not only is this greater society evil not only is it moral less lacks moral um, lacks character, uh, would love to lack diversity. Uh, it's oppressive, it's discriminatory, and most of all, it targets our children. This young woman is, this young lady is 16 years old. She be, she should be focusing on, on academics, on uh, hanging out with her girlfriends, on um, you know coming into being attracted to boys. Um, dating, she be you know looking at prospects for um, schools, university, um, focusing on uh, getting ready to finish this school year out and get a summer job. You know she should be focusing on things sixteen year olds should be focusing on. She shouldn't be focusing on the, her very existence, the, her her natural existence as a human being, being attacked by a, a group of cowards, a, a group of not only cowards, but racist and evil, um, whether it be the school district itself or it's the, the, the policy uh, that was written, the handbook, those that enforce it. These people are um, moralists. They have, they lack empathy. They lack, um, they lack a, for a better, they really do lack a soul. It's it's very basic to look at someone and recognize that they are a walking, talking, breathing um, individual entity, a part of this species, <laughs> you know, human beings, right? And that um, the way their skin is, their, their eyes, the color of their hair, the way they walk, the way they talk, all of this is natural to them. It's not something that they can... Um, or that they should have to change in order to fit into a greater society. I just think it's it's crazy to subject a 16-year-old or anyone, for that matter, a five-year-old um, or a hundred-year-old to such um, harassment. What I was gonna, what I'm trying to say here is that, um, you know, as as a spiritual people, um, as a people that have been come that have come to all these different places in the on the on the globe through a process or through transatlantic slave trade and then you know you had that you had um, Jim Crow you had all these other um, um, societal um, I don't know how to say it um, 
I guess you can say uh, laws and um, policies and that mandates that affect a particular group of people. We have to come to we have to understand that even even before we actually integrated into the greater society, we we as a as a people, although we still were fighting for civil rights. Um, you know that we should be able to go into any story we wanted to, but we should also always have to remember that we had our own stores, we had our own uh, barbers, we had our own doctors, our own um, gas stations, our own mechanics. We had our, we had our own communities, and our dollars circulated in that community, and we had wealth and pride and community through that. And so once we integrated, all we just all that crumbled. That foundation was destroyed. And here we find ourselves here, you know, 70 plus years later, where we're seeing that we're being attacked um, in a greater society as an, uh, as human beings. We're being attacked. Our children are being attacked. We're being murdered. We're being raped. We're being hung. We're being, we don't, we don't receive e equal protection under the law. Um, you know, the court system is stacked against us. You know, you can have on video where a cop shoots a man in the back and he is, um, you know, not convicted on that. Or, um, a cop shoots a man, um, a female cop shoots a black man, uh, Crutcher, I think his name was, and she's acquitted. She murders him. She overreacts. She uses excessive force, whatever you want to cause, but it caused the death of a man. And here she was. She was acquitted a couple of days ago. So this is the society that we're living in. If these aren't, uh, uh, you know, gentle prods or poking the bear or the Ruach HaKodesh, uh, Yahuwah, Yahushua, Yahushua, trying to tell us as a nation, as a people, that we need to separate ourselves from this greater society and we need to come out of her. Because he tells us in Revelations um, chapter 18, verse 4, and he's speaking, the, the author is being spoke to, and he's saying, and he's, he's saying he heard a vo another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sin, and that ye, not, ye receive not of her plagues. So if we look at this greater society right now. What do we see? An increase in lawlessness, an increase in perversion, an increase in um, the degradation of uh, a law-abiding, uh, a law-abiding society, a society that has laws that are applicable across the board to all people that's applied evenly and justly. Okay, we've always known this, but it seems to be an increase. And the degradation of the society upon which we're living. And it doesn't even matter if it's in North America. It's all over the globe. We even have in some um, Western, society, uh, Western uh, countries, European countries, where they actually have laws in place where it's bestiality is actually legal for a human being to have <laughs> um, a physical sexual uh, relationship or sexual intercourse with an annual. We actually they actually have um, organizations that um, that are based upon that, and they actually have laws that that it's it's um, it's legal. I believe there are states within the United States where bestiality is legal too. Um, See if I can uh, find. Yeah, the Tignan law I was speaking about was implemented in 1786, um, and I'll put that link below for you guys so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. Um, and let's look at bestiality laws in the United States itself. Let's see. My system is so slow. But um, so we, we, in some states in America, um, bestiality is legal. I'm going to see if I can find. But I'll look for that too and I'll put that in the, draw, in the description box as well. Um, so um, in scripture, Yahuwah is telling us as a, as a nation, as a people, that we need to separate ourselves. So basically we are, we live in this world, but we're not of this world. Meaning to, that we should be able to recognize, right, through um, the lenses of the law, statutes, and commandments, right, of Yahuwah uh, in the Bible. Even if you just look in the 66 books of of of, um, of the Bible, you can find, um, you can use those those uh, parables, you can use those laws, you can use those chapters, those books, those revelations, and as a lens on how you would view the world and how you should behave and navigate yourself through it. It should 
really does not support uh, bestiality. It does not support murder. It does not support rape. It does not support, um, you know, um, you know, breaking the law and then finding yourself not guilty. Okay, and, and it doesn't support a video clearly showing a person being murdered by um, uh, public servants and not being um, even charged with murder or not being indicted or not um, or being um, what they call um, let go, not being uh, found guilty. Okay, so um, this is the world we live in. And so this this uh, occurrence with this student at, at Mount Verde Academy is just a it's just an example of how how our the society which we find ourselves living in, whether wherever we are on the on the on the planet, how everything is 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 falling apart. When you can have a little girl, sixteen year old girl, being subjected to such cruelty, such soulless cruelty, where her parents have to rush in because there's no moral ethical basis upon which the, the the leadership within that um that school or the education system right they have no basic humanity in them where they can actually look at this young girl and say well that's just natural that's how our hair grows but but our requirement is is that okay you can wear your hair naturally like it grows but it has to be neat and what is neat if they, you know, like in the military, they have policy on dress code and how long your hair can be. It can't go, uh, it can't, um, like if you have a woman, you have long hair. It can't, you, when you're when you're in uniform, it can't um, go um, beneath your, longer than your collar. So you'll see most military women with their hair up in a bun or they'll cut it short like mine. Or if they have braids, they'll have to tie it up because it has to be a dress code for, for neatliness. So... Or uniformity and that's nothing wrong with that if you choose to join an organization or work in an organization that says this is the policy that policy should be followed but it should not discriminate based on you based upon your race okay so I think that's where we're, where we're finding ourselves now is we're living within a society that actually um, deems who we are naturally as a people born when we're born that our appearance our natural hair our features you know our language is is not appropriate for the society which i think is just it's cruel and it's unusual and it's it's actually evil um we can also find in in second corinthians uh chapter 6 verse 17 and it's um in this instance uh yahusha is telling the people to well, he said wherefore come out from among them and be ye separate said Yahuwah, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. So here we're being told that unclean living, unclean food, unclean behavior, unclean spiritual association, physical association, all these things separate, separate us from Yahusha, uh, and, and ultimately separate us from Yahuwah, okay? So, um, you know, we have to... Uh, Think about what's most important. Is it more important for our children to uh, go to a so-called prestigious academic uh, academy where they're going to be discriminated against and you're going to have to fight every inch of the way for them to be treated as a human being as they naturally are? Or is it, or, or are we going to continue to funnel our money into institutions and to products that eventually, once they build their reputation and build the ground, their foundation upon our uh, population, that then they change the formula and, and then we can no longer use the product? You know, when are we going to recognize that it's time for us to separate ourselves from, from our enemies? And that means to take our dollars from um, and, and funnel them into enterprises and, and um, spaces with our own, within our own communities starting with um, private uh, educational institutions, starting with building our own businesses. You know, we have uh, very foundational businesses we can put, we can stand up and we have stood up in our own communities from beauty salons, um, men um, having a trade, you know, heating and air conditioning, repair people, that kind of stuff. I mean, schools, schools, teachers, docs, we have, I go to a black dentist. Um, I go to a black uh, doctor. 
Um, and so we have those ex we have the expertise, we have the education already within our within our society, within the society, within our communities. We just need to funnel that we need to funnel those and we need to buy black, we need to spend black, we need to um separate ourselves where our, specifically our children because they're being subjected to stuff that is going to damage them that's going to affect how they view themselves um you know in the greater society and they shouldn't be subjected to that no child should be subjected to such um horrendous and evil um persecution so with that israel i'm going to end it here but i just wanted to um you know, do another uh, segment of this um, series, What's Happening. And this is what happened to Nicole Orr. She's a 16 year old uh, student at Mount Verde Academy in Florida. And I just think it's a shame that our children have to be subjected to this. And here it is, the 21st century, 2017, and we're still having to deal with such discrimination, um, immoral, unethical behavior by the greatest society towards our, our communities and ourselves. Hallelujah.